Hello folks, welcome to part 25 of this hybrid zombie shooter game. And today we're going to take a look at how to improve our XP and also build in a XP bar to show the player their current progress on their XP. This is going to be a very simple tutorial and a very quick one. I hope you like it. And if you do, please feel free to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel as we're getting more and more interesting tutorials coming up in the future dates. Thank you very much for stopping by. Let's get into the video and see how this is done. Let's start with adding our level and a XP bar to our ID card. So I'm going to go to my content drawer and go into the player info, UI, and then open up the player ID card. Now I made a small change to this ID card. I kind of cleaned up all of the characters that were here. That was not really making any sense. And then also the biohazard sign here. I removed it uh, because I would like to actually have the player level. Uh, in this spot rather than having it too small. I think this is a very good spot for it to be. So let's go ahead and move this player level. So first I'm going to go ahead and add in a size box. So right click on this player level, wrap it with a size box. This size box, I'm going to go ahead and set the width and the height override to 100 by 90. And also the size box, I'm going to go ahead and reset these paddings on the top and the left. And then I'm going to add in a left padding of 97 and also the bottom padding of 45. And set the anchors to center. And that should put it right in there. Uh, let's go ahead and compile it. And now for the actual level itself, I'm going to go ahead and center the actual level here in the middle. And let's set the font to about 70. And I want to do some padding because it's very much to the bottom here. So I'm going to do like a 15 padding on the bottom. That should bring it somewhere in the middle. That looks about good. So if I go ahead and press play, I can see the level is actually in the center of this box. And it actually looks pretty good. I like it. So let's go ahead and do the functionality behind this. Now we're going to use some interfaces to communicate between our player stat component manager and also this widget. So let's go ahead and do that. So in our content drawer, let's go to our core folder, interfaces, let's create a new interface for this. And this interface would be BPI underscore player ID card. So any communication that we want to do with our ID card, we're going to use this interface. So this interface, first thing that we need to have is our level. So we're going to go ahead and do a get underscore player level. This is going to have one input, and this would be our player level. And this would be of type flow. Compile and save. Currently, we already have a function on the construct to get the level from our player info. We're going to leave that as it is, and we're going to actually implement the interface function on top of it. So let's go ahead to our class settings, and we're going to go to our implemented interfaces, and then we're going to search for our BPI player ID card. And here we're going to have our interface function for get player level. We're going to double click on it. And this is actually a float. If I set this up in my player level right now, it's going to have 1.0. It's going to have that decimal. So let's go ahead and convert this to an integer. To convert it to an integer, all you have to do is just call in the truncate function, which will convert a float into an integer. And from here, we can just drag this player level and set text function and plug it in here just like this and then plug this level into this in text compile and save it and this is all it that you need to do for the player level so let's go to our content drawer third person blueprints let's open up our third person character blueprint and here we're going to go to our component right click on this player stat manager and we're going to click on edit this would actually open up our player stat manager and here we conveniently have a function to level up the player so when the player level ups every single time, we're going to go ahead and send in this interface function to update the player level in the ID card. That's how simple it's going to be. So double click on this player level. At the very end, before we do the return node, let's go ahead and call in get all widgets with interface. And this would be our player ID card interface. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to say get underscore player level. You know what? This get doesn't make any sense. So let's go ahead and change that to update. There you go. That makes more sense. Update. 
update player level and make sure this is a message with this little envelope on the top. Let's connect the execution pin just like this and then also this found widgets connected to the target. And for the player level, we're just going to do a get function here, the get stat value. And this is going to be the player level and then just plug it in here just like this. And that's all you have to do to get the player level and update it here. And one more thing that I do want is our player is going to be starting at level one according to our stat map. So I want to be consistent with that as well. So in our player info, where we have our DT player info, I'm going to go ahead and make this player level to start at level one. And this should all work out very well. So if I press play, I see that the player is already at level one. And if I press C a couple times, I should see it go to level two. And if I press C again and again, and then I can see the player is actually leveling up. And it looks pretty good. Now let's add in a progress bar to really show the player how much XP they have gained and how, where are they in the level up process. So back in our player ID card, let's go ahead and design that. So I'm going to go ahead and call in for a progress bar and add it to the overlay here. Now the idea here is that I want the progress bar to be right above this level and it's going to increase as the player gains XP so the player can visually see where they are. And, and every time the player levels up, I want this bar to reset and then go from the beginning again. So I'm going to select the progress bar first and I'm going to set the horizontal alignment to the right side here. And for the top padding, uh, 104 was working very well in your game based on how you want to set this up, you can change things around. And also for the right padding, 28 puts it right on the edge of that bar. And now I can select the progress bar and down below where we have the marquee image setting, where I have the image size. This is basically the progress bar size. I'm going to set the X to 100. So that fills up the entire bar. And the Y, I'm going to reduce it to like 10.7. And so it fits within the entire um, section here. I'm not really a fan of this gray background that this progress bar has. So I want to replace it with the image behind it. So one of the easiest way to do it is to take a screenshot of that little slot. Um, I use PowerPoint. So I just go to PowerPoint and I'm going to use like green shot and then take a quick snapshot of that exact slot. And then I can save it directly to my desktop and I can import it into Unreal Engine. Now I have already done that. So in my PNG folder, I have already done it. So if I open this up, that's how the bar is going to look like. Now back in my player card, while the progress bar being selected, this background image, I'm going to go ahead and drag it and drop it onto the background image. So it kind of blends in with everything in the background. Now, I also want to make sure that it draws as not a box, but as an image. So it fits nice and nice and clean. And as for the progress bar, as soon as it starts filling up, you can see how the progress bar is going to fill in and it doesn't even look like there's a progress bar there, which is great. And one more edit that I want to do to the progress bar is I want to make this a type of red. So I'm going to just select this um, eyedropper and then set this to a red color that's already on the card, something like this. That's almost like a you know, blood looking. So that's all I'm going to do here. Let's go ahead and create the functionality for this. For this, we're going to use the binding for our percentage, and also we're going to use an interface function to get the information. Normally, we would cast when we do a binding, but we're going to do an interface function to take care of that. In our player ID card interface, we're going to go ahead and add in a new function, and this would be for get underscore XP value. Now, this get XP value, we require three values from our player stat manager. So the first value, we're going to add it to our output, actually, not it to our input. Um, first value is going to be our current XP amount. And the second value that we're going to get is XP to next level. And the third value that we need is the total XP. This is our bucket of XP that we have gained so far in our lifetime in the game. And now we're going to go back to our player card while having the progress bar selected. Where you have the percent, click on this little binding icon and then click on create binding. And this will allow us to continuously track where our XP is and then keep updating the value and also keep the progress bar updated as the player gains more and more XP. 
So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get our player character. And off of this player character, we're going to go ahead and do the get underscore XP value. Now make sure this is a message and connect this to the execution pin. Just like so. And first thing that we need to do is we're going to get our XP to next level and do a subtraction. Uh, we need to remove the total XP gain from the XP to next level and then get our current XP, divide it by the result of this, and then this would be how much XP the player uh, has to get before they can level up to the next level. That's it. It's very simple as this. And now we just need to set up this get XP uh, value function because we're getting it off of our player character. I'm going to go to our third person character, class settings, and add in this BPI underscore player ID card. Now, if I open up the interface here, I should have the player ID card section. And here I have the get XP value. Now, this is grayed out is because we have an output. And that's why this is going to always result in a creating a function rather than creating an event like we normally do. So now we just need to send in these information. So we're going to drag in our player stat manager. And here we're going to go ahead and get a stat value. And I'm going to copy and paste this three times, one for each of the value that we need to send it through. Uh, connect the BPC stat manager as the target. And the first one is going to be current XP, and I'm going to plug this into the current XP amount. Second one is XP to level up. I'm going to plug this in here. And the third one is going to be total XP gained, and I'm going to plug it in here just like so. Now we can compile and save this, and that's all we need to do in terms of the XP function. Um, so let's go ahead and test this out. If I press play, and here if I press C to give myself some XP, you can see the XP bar is actually going up. And as soon as the player hits the next level, the bar resets back to zero and it's starting again. And this is exactly what I want to show the player. And as you can see, it's getting progressively difficult for the player to gain more and more XP as they level up higher and higher. Um, again, just to remind you, in our Calculate XP for Next Level, the steepness determines how difficult it's going to be for the player to gain XP as they level up. Uh, so if I set this to 15, and if I press Play, um, I don't need to gain that much of XP to get from level 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. Play with the steepness and also the base amount for you to find a comfortable spot where it's the game is not too grindy for the player to level up, but at the same time, it's not too easy for the player to level up to higher levels. Excellent. So that's all I wanted to show you in this video today. Thank you again for stopping by, and I'll catch you on the next video.